My name is Mike Korshanov, and I am a team here at Cisco. And today, my topic would be about telemetry and GNMI. This is the best part, and we are going to uh, discover it. So, um, if we talk about telemetry, um, <coughs> telemetry has uh, a lot of appliances. Um, but uh, telemetry itself, it's automated process to receive uh, uh, the, the data from inaccessible points and have it for monitoring or just for storage. And uh, from hist uh, historical point of view, telemetry is used in meteorology for 100 years. Um, it gathers all, all the data about humidity, uh, wind speed, and temperatures. Um, medicine, uh, very popular appliances, uh, appliance for telemetry. Um, some other aspects with wildlife uh, research where you can study uh, animal behavior but we are for telemetry for network devices over here. And streaming telemetry for um, network de uh, devices for iOS XR exists around three years. So it's growing, uh, it's moved from uh, exploratory mo mode to uh, plateau of uh, production. And a lot of uh, customers already uh, have telemetry in their production networks and uh, pretty happy. Uh, if we compare streaming telemetry to SNNP, we can see, uh, we can observe a significant improvement across various aspects. We can stream, uh, we can push uh, more, more counters and do it much faster. Uh, we can add more destin uh, destinations or add more receivers, and we uh, notice that uh, CPU load doesn't increase significantly. Uh, and um, amount of counters which we can share uh, without heavy memory con uh, consumption, um, it's um, improved significantly over SNP. So um, key messages from which uh, we can uh, send more, more uh, counter data, uh, we have reduction in CPU load because of the uh, architectural approach um, in the operation system as well. And we have faster collections. If we talk about models, um, uh, right, right now, iOS XR for 651 supports around uh, 35 um, open config modules, and um, we keep increasing this number, and around 200 native modules um, uh, for whole operation uh, system. Uh, we keep uh, watching at the standard bodies and the activities uh, which, uh, which is coming, so um, some other models from, uh, may be added in future. <coughs> Um, where, where are some tricks how to use telemetry? And for example, uh, one of neat trick to run uh, MDT exec uh, comment on a device and to check what's streamed uh, uh, right from the box. So no stack, uh, no telemetry stack needed. You just execute this comment, provide sensor path, and you have already available um, da data um, for, uh, stream, uh, streamed out your device. And um, if you just want to quickly try it, um, uh, to, uh, to figure out sensor path, is it uh, right for you, is it, does it have uh, pro proper data, here's your um, sm small trick. Um, when we share um, our data and we, uh, when we uh, pu push it out of the box, we need to encode um, our data. And there are three, uh, three ways uh, for encodings we, uh, which we support. Uh, first is compact uh, GPB, uh, second key value GPB, and third one is JSON. If we talk about like um, wire efficiency, um, or compact GPB is uh, number one in terms of um, amount of data which is um, streamed, uh, which is tra transferred because it's uh, mini minimum overhead which is going through the channel. Um, and everything is binary in uh, GPB. But um, you need a proto file for each model. If we talk uh, about uh, key value uh, GPB, now we have introduced um, uh, string keys and uh, they are easily consumable, but values still binary. And a uh, single proto file required for decoding. And JSON, some customer asked for it uh, and we uh, edit it as well. Everything um, is a string, keys, values. Uh, you have less wire uh, efficiency, but you can uh, offload all your data to some uh, bus for further consumption, and uh, it's very human-friendly. If we talk more about um, 
GPB or Google Proto buffers, they require a decoder ring. Um, the beauty of GPB, um, it's, GPB is extremely uh, simple, fast, and backward compatible. And um, as, as a disadvantage, you, you need some tooling um, uh, to, uh, to encode and, and decode, decode your message. And um, proto files should, uh, should be generated uh, to help uh, with um, encoding. If we take a look at the difference between k-value uh, GPB and uh, co compact um, GPB, uh, the um, in, in, uh, k-value GPB, uh, key name corresponds to element in Young model. And in terms of um, just uh, compact uh, format, uh, binary key ne needs um, an our Young model and specific proto file to decode. And um, uh, all these pro uh, pro uh, proto files uh, will be published uh, pr pretty soon. So um, if we talk about key value, GPB message, um, we, we have all the uh, st 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 standard uh, key values for, um, for our model. And uh, the data inside, it's all, uh, it's all uh, binary. Um, we also have a uh, collection end time, uh, timestamp, uh, some ID, uh, <coughs> encoding path, which, uh, which is shared. And we, this is pre, uh, pre, pre, uh, pretty standard for uh, our message. If we talk about uh, G, uh, compact uh, GPB, we, we can see that uh, all our co content already binary. Uh, uh, binary. Uh, but we still uh, have a, tra a traditional collection ID, encoding path, and um, collection end time. When we switch to JSON, it's uh, most consumable and most uh, user-friendly format. And uh, in terms of uh, data, everything is in the content on the right side, and it's really easy uh, to consume. If we provide some numbers, how big uh, is transferred data to, uh, to share uh, say, same message, GPB uh, would be this uh, smallest format. Key value, um, uh, GPB goes on a second place. And JSON adds some um, um, overhead, for, um, let's say, for key value GPB. So it's le less efficient. But again, it depends on uh, your use case and where you want to put data. If you don't want to deal with tooling, you, uh, you may uh, skip um, comp uh, compact GPB or k-value GPB. But if you want to be extremely uh, efficient, uh, you will probably stick to GPB because of the uh, wire efficiency. Uh, with, tra uh, with transport options, uh, there is uh, nothing new. We support um, UDP and uh, um, TCP along with gRPC. And uh, two methods for communication with uh, devices. Uh, one, uh, one is uh, deal out when uh, de a device initiates a connection with a router. And deal in um, if collector started to talk um, to, uh, to our device. And if we think about gRPC, um, it brings some advantages. Because uh, with gRPC uh, from controllers, uh, from collector side, we, we can uh, send the, uh, window updates uh, and opti optimize the <coughs> data transfer. Um, al also, um, encry encry encryption available. And if we just uh, disable, uh, disable TLS, uh, all our uh, d uh, data and credentials shared uh, without, uh, without, in a plain text, uh, no encryption. But uh, TLS can be enabled, and we will see nothing in our message content, just encrypted it bits and bytes. When we are going about gRPC support, we need uh, um, to, be, uh, to be clear that um, it may be a different thing for different vendors. Uh, for example, if we take a look at gRPC config operation, it has uh, different methods, uh, different signatures. And um, it looks like b both vendors support gRPC, but uh, the um, nuances hidden in details of implementation. Um, so it's not, it's not that uh, easy to um, uh, normalize all the messages uh, coming from like multi-vendor setup. And we need to be, uh, to be careful when we uh, receive uh, gRPC data. Um, once your net, uh, you start to use telemetry in production, you should be uh, considering how much data you, you want to transfer. 
uh, it's not only server cons uh, considerations, it's about uh, um, <coughs> transferred counters. And um, if you um, take a look at ca current gra graphs, uh, a way, a way um, produced with uh, 300k counters every five seconds out of device. And we can see how, uh, how much data is generated uh, for each uh, encoding and uh, each transport. What, what do people use um, in uh, telemetry in their uh, real networks? Uh, right, right now, for uh, transport, gRPC uh, uh, number one so solution, and uh, TCP on the second place, and UDP usually utilized um, across more uh, classical or um, not the uh, mod modern age platforms. So gRPC, TCP, and UDP is a third one. Uh, from the model uh, perspective, um, open config uh, goes first because of the um, wide, wide uh, vendor ad adoption, and you can just uh, share your model, uh, your open config model, and you don't need to um, to deal with it later with some like analytics tools because it will be unified um, ac across multiple vendors. And um, na native model is also used because we pr uh, allow you to uh, collect mo uh, more data uh, out of the box. And um, some other standard bi uh, bodies are uh, included as well. And in terms of uh, encoding, right, right now, uh, key value GPB is um, number one when it goes with uh, high, uh, highly efficient GPB. And uh, the last but not least is JSON. When a model tree uh, driven telemetry uh, doesn't fit, uh, fit for us, we uh, utilize even, uh, even driven. And um, we keep investing in um, even driven telemetry. And if we take a look at uh, various iOS 6 releases, in 6.3.1, we introduce uh, interface notifications, rib, syslog. In 6.3.2, uh, we added support for LDP. And uh, with uh, Last year's summer releases, uh, we added a bunch of uh, support for open config models. And mo um, model dri uh, like even driven telemetry is very, very easy to configure. Uh, that's just with uh, these three lines, um, it's already enabled. On the, uh, on the one of previous slide, um, I said it's not enough just to claim gRPC support. Um, and um, the, the, the solution to address that is GNMI. GNMI is network management interface defined by open uh, config and mostly led uh, by Google. Um, configuration uh, management and uh, streaming telemetry in a single protocol. Uh, also, it's data model independent and streamed, um, and it relies on uh, gRPC for communication. Um, a, a lot of tooling and uh, it's uh, high, uh, high performant uh, additional benefits for GNMI. So let's take a look at more details of it. Uh, so, so some of it uh, were covered in, uh, in presentation of my colleague Santiago. And uh, we uh, will be focusing only on subscribe aspect. Because uh, to get information from net uh, network device, um, we will rely uh, only on subscribe. We are not interested in set or get or retrieving capabilities from the de uh, devices. And we'll um, talk more about subscribe itself. Um, there are uh, different uh, versions of GNMI, and most vendors use uh, 0 0.4 implementation as of now. It's all open sourced and published on GitHub. So if you're interested in more details for GNMI, just uh, click uh, the link and you, you have a whole uh, description now for the current release. Um, before, before we start to uh, stream our data, we need to subscribe to, uh, to uh, start with subscribe request. And su um, subscription list is generated. And within uh, this subscription list, uh, we have a bunch of parameters which we need to specify. Uh, if we talk about mode, there are three modes how you can communicate to a device. Is it going to be um, a one-time one transfer? And if so, you just need to select uh, to choose once. If it's going to be uh, polling from time to time, your option is poll. And if it's ongoing communication, it's just stream. 
Also, you provide sample interval and um, um, all, all the models which you need to, uh, to transfer. If we talk about um, response, uh, the unit of communication is notification. Uh, notification is um, including uh, timestamp, uh, which is man mandatory for each notification. And then uh, we have all the val uh, values available um, in, in our structure. Uh, and I'm going to show case uh, gene, uh, GNMI um, a demo uh, very briefly, so stay tuned to it. Um, how to check what's uh, in, in, in the subscription and um, uh, what exactly uh, dev device is doing. Uh, we execute uh, show te uh, telemetry module driven subscription and um, <coughs> we can see a bunch of sensor groups. Uh, these sensor groups uh, sent with specific uh, interval, uh, which is uh, mentioned below. And uh, we, uh, we are in a good shape because all state for them is resolved. If we take a look at destination group, uh, it's worth to mention um, its ID, its G uh, GNMI. Uh, TOS is enabled by default, um, so we have a, sp a special knob for disabling TOS. Encoding GNMI uh, proto, uh, transfer DL in, and um, our state is active. Uh, we, we can check uh, what's inside um, specific subscription. And once we, uh, we are doing, uh, we, we can uh, see that sensor path for each subscription uh, could, could be resolved, and that's, uh, that's a uh, good sign. Some of the output are muted over here, so we don't, uh, don't bother with a lot of um, uh, device output. And um, we also support filtering, so show telemetry, model-driven subs, GNMI, and asterisk will work on device as well. Um, GNMI implementation in Cisco IO6R, it's based, uh, it's based on uh, 0 0.4. Um, it's introduced in release 651, and I will showcase it on the device. And uh, configuration is uh, very simple. We just need to uh, <coughs> press the in of gRPC and specify the port. And um, TLS enabled by default, but if you want to switch it off for your uh, sandbox or lab environment, you just provide no TLS keyword. So um, GNMI should, should be the right answer for your um, streaming data, because it will allow you to unif uh, unify all, informa uh, all information and um, it will rely on a like, s s s single mechanism. If we check uh, what we, uh, where we support GNMI, uh, in 651 uh, it was introduced in uh, evolved um, XR on ISRN and K, on uh, NCS 5500 family, and on NCS 6K. <coughs> Once we uh, collect all the data, we need uh, m multiple steps uh, to, uh, to work with it. So uh, collecting is the first one. We need to aggregate it, normalize. And um, after the data is collected, we proceeding with storage. With storage, uh, we can build an index. We can do some searching mechanism. Or we can uh, configure retention policy. Or uh, depends on how, uh, how long we want our data to, uh, to keep in database. And once uh, this data is stored in a, uh, some kind of database, we proceed with applications on top of it. It could be a visualization application um, uh, matched with al alerting or notification mechanism or some autom automation techniques in order to uh, make a close loop with telemetry. Uh, you can start with telemetry today. No additional packages or license requi required for you. You just uh, take your IO6R box, and um, on the link below, there's an exa uh, example for a telemetry stack. You, you can download it uh, from GitHub and just, uh, just deploy on your server, on your laptop, and start collecting all your data. So you, uh, your stack will consist of pipeline as a collector, and once a, a data is digested into pipeline, you can uh, push it to uh, one of the uh, further receivers. It could be a time series data by, uh, da database such as InfluxDB. It could be um, push gateway with Prometheus or just Kafka bus uh, for our uh, further consumption. Um, we use for visualization Grafana uh, because of the open source and um, 
how the community is invo uh, invo evolving. Um, a lot of changes an announced uh, pretty recently. And if we talk ab more about pipeline, we released um, an updated version with uh, GNMI, and it, um, you, you can download it from GitHub. It's open source. And you can specify where you want to, um, to uh, push your data, and GNMI uh, support is added for that. Uh, as we can see, just a uh, specific path is um, described uh, into your configuration, and that's it. You don't need anything else. Uh, also, we are working on a, um, a, a plugin for Telegraph uh, because um, work is almost done, and we are planning to uh, release it uh, pretty, pretty soon, um, probably in the uh, ne next few months. And this will bring you uh, other vendors as well. It's uh, GNM, uh, GNMI with Telegraph uh, plugin would be a pretty uh, convenient um, solution for your network. And if we take a look at the uh, available input plugins, it's a uh, pretty exhaustive list of what's uh, supported as an in input plugins, plus um, a GNMI for Cisco and our vendors go are going to be uh, released pretty soon. Um, and if you want to push your data further, um, it's e easy to do, and a lot of appliances. Or over here, all your popular, uh, all your popular so uh, solutions such as Influx, Elastic Stack, we all available here. Or um, it's pretty open, and uh, the community are, are around Telegraph just keep growing. If we talk about uh, telemetry, uh, three years ago it, uh, it was started, and right now uh, mo most of the co com commercial offers available st uh, streaming telemetry uh, um, out, out of the box or out of the solution. So um, telemetry is going to like a plateau of pro uh, production. But uh, keep in mind that um, telemetry uh, with GNMI, it's only one piece uh, of the full picture. Uh, because it's used uh, for like, uh, street, uh, street, uh, encoding data. And uh, we shouldn't forget about our uh, young uh, models and relies, uh, rely on it for programmability aspect. Um, another one is uh, to get operational comments and uh, um, um, Google Network Operation Interface, GNOI, introduced to co cover uh, this aspect. And another one is Jiribai. It's um, your uh, RIB injection and hand handling with RIB. We have um, our own um, solution. It's called Service Layer API. And right now, um, I want to showcase a sm uh, small demo with NTS 5500. Um, I showcase this uh, sm small utility, uh, run MDT exec, with providing a uh, sensor path to it. And this is just an example of how it works. Uh, works like uh, all sensor paths are available for you for exploration. And you can just check uh, what can be streamed out of box just right away. Um, if we check release, it's uh, 651. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, in 651, uh, um, GNMI support was uh, introduced. Let's take a look at telemetry subscriptions. We have a bunch of subscriptions available in the box, and we are interested in, uh, in particular in the last one for GNMI. As you can see, all state um, are res uh, resolved, and that's a good sign. Um, G uh, GNMI ID for, for um, this subscription. Uh, encoding is GNMI proto, and transport the uh, DOM. So um, our, config uh, our configuration is done on the box. And we can check specific subscription. Um, we can go by um, by full name, um, and under this uh, subscription, we see all the sensor path stre uh, streamed uh, uh, stre streamed out of the box. And a uh, good sign; they all resolved. So a bunch of them. Also, we have uh, all information when collection uh, started, when it's ended. So it's uh, useful uh, information, which can be utilize, uh, utilized uh, to troubleshoot some uh, issues with telemetry. If, uh, 
going to arise. And um, we can also do filtering. And GNMI asterisk will do uh, the same work for us. Once we uh, stream all this data, we want to see what's going, uh, what's going on with our um, information. And we, uh, we have a visualization in Grafana. Uh, on the first dashboard, we can see um, BGP um, unicast prefix count. And um, it's worth to mention, this is open config model. If we check, uh, here we have sensor path for this specific model. So uh, we, um, that's streamed over GNMI. And I have a script uh, which is running some changes on our network. So we, we can see um, how historically uh, prefix has changed. Uh, what's the uh, current amount of uh, prefixes introduced, and also some more uh, information we can retrieve from uh, uh, our BGP instance, like uh, lo local ISN, uh, wh what's happening in our network, and if we talk, uh, if we take uh, one more look, it's still uh, GNMI open config model. So as um, as you may see, there are a lot of information which we can retrieve from it. And um, it's working already over uh, GNMI. Um, but we can also take a look at the uh, native model. So if you want a like, superset of the data and to check uh, what exactly is go going on, you can retrieve this information as well. And in the end, this is just like tra a, tra a traditional uh, device health check. So uh, everything is, looks good. And thank you for your attention. <laughs>